This is the Dollamore Daily, and I'm Jesse Dollamore. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the show. Before I get started, there's obviously something different about me. (laughs) I haven't gotten any smarter, if that's what you're wondering. Uh, I shaved my dome. As many of you know, if you've been following along for the past several weeks, uh, I am temporarily, have a different studio, I'm temporarily in Washington State um, caring for my daughter who is going through chemo. And the effects of the chemo took her faster than we thought relative to her hair loss. So we did a joint thing today where we both shaved our heads. So I am doing this in solidarity to my daughter. And uh, that is that. So that explains it. Not making excuses by any means, but certainly wanted to let you know that I didn't join some far-right white supremacist faction and become a skinhead. I'm doing this because I love and support my daughter. So, today I want to talk about Donald Trump, this 4th of July, celebrating Independence Day. He gave a speech in South Dakota with the Mount Rushmore behind him. And with that as a backdrop, he chose to use a a moment that should have been absolutely about unifying the country and a celebration of America and our independence from the crown, and he used it as a stump speech. A dumb, dumb, divisive stump speech. And there's one moment from it that I want to talk about, but uh, first, let's get to the fact, we, I want to remind everybody that Donald Trump, time and time and time and time again, has, has repeated his, about his intellect. He is the best brain, and he's just a stellar, stable genius. I mean, he's said many times how he's an Ivy League-educated person, uh, very highly educated, and he has the best words. Remember that. I went to an Ivy League school... I'm very highly educated. I know words. I have the best words. I have the be- But there's no better word than stupid. <laughs> right? There is none. There is none. And that guy, that highly educated, Ivy League educated individual who has the best words, can't even pronounce the word totalitarianism when it's written down in front of his goddamn face on a teleprompter. Watch this incredible moment. This is the very definition of totalitarianism. (laughs) And it is completely alien to our culture and to our values. Totalitarianism. Moron. Yeah. If you're a hate watcher and you're a Donald Trump supporter, your president is a moron. He's an Ivy League educated individual who can't pronounce the word totalitarianism. An easy one. Something he should know, really, let's be honest. Donald Trump, of all people, should know what totalitarianism is. So, uh, let's get to his speech. There was a, a about that starts with this totalitarianism line. It, it goes for about two and a half minutes. I will put the, the time stamp on the video so you know if you want to skip ahead, if you've already seen it, or you don't want to listen to his stupid voice, that is fine. Because we're going to cover and uncover just how ridiculous Donald Trump is and how he doesn't understand, first of all, what fascism is. But secondly, this is a window. We are peering through a window into what Donald Trump's 2020 campaign is going to be, what he's going to focus on, and to whom he's going to be addressing these issues. What exactly his strategy is going to be and to whom it's going to be geared. Anyway, uh, let's start with this. This is the very definition of totalitarianism, and it is completely alien to our culture and to our values, and it has absolutely no place in the United States of America. This attack on our liberty, our magnificent liberty, must be stopped, and it will be stopped very quickly. We will expose this dangerous movement, protect our nation's children, 
end this radical assault and preserve our beloved American way of life. In our schools, our newsrooms, even our corporate boardrooms, there is a new far-left fascism that demands absolute allegiance. If you do not speak its language, perform its rituals, recite its mantras, and follow its commandments, then you will be censored, banished, blacklisted, persecuted, and punished. It's not going to happen to us. Make no mistake, this left-wing cultural revolution is designed to overthrow the American Revolution. In so doing, they would destroy the very civilization that rescued billions from poverty, disease, violence, and hunger, and that lifted humanity to new heights of achievement, discovery, and progress. To make this possible, they are determined to tear down every statue, symbol, and memory of our national heritage. <laughs> true. That's very true, actually. That is, a uh, very true, actually. <laughs> Ugh. He doesn't even do smug well. Scumbag. So there's a few points here that I want to get to. First of all, this, this way to flip the script or attempt to and try to make fascism a far left thing or a left wing thing or even just a basic run of the mill milk toast liberal thing it is not fascism is a far right ideology remember started mussolini and hitler were fascists they weren't liberals And for him to say that the left-wing cultural revolution is designed to overthrow the American Revolution. Well, if that's the case, then I guess it means we want to be under the crown of Britain once again. Is that what he's saying? That we want to destroy civilization that freed people from poverty, disease, violence, and hunger. He acts like the United States is paramount in freedom, and it always has been, even though we were one of the last states to uh, abolish slavery as an institution, as a practice. We weren't the first. We weren't pioneers in freeing the slaves. We were not. Britain, which has its own panoply of civil and human rights issues, they were ahead of us. By decades, they were ahead of us. And then, to make this possible, Democrats, he believes, are determined to tear down statues, symbols, and memories of our national heritage. What he's talking about there is statues that have been erected to glorify racists and traitors to the United States of America. Statues to people like... Uh, Nathan Bedford, the founder of the Ku Klux Klan, statues of him all over the South, statues of Robert E. Lee, who led a movement to, to kill Americans in battle over owning human beings as property. But as far as his complete misunderstanding, oh, I believe he understands, but his, his complete um, trying to flip the script about what fascism is, we're going to do something a little different here. And I'm going to go through these very quickly. It's not going to take me very long. This is a classroom aid for high school kids. So we'll make it real dumbed down for the Trump dummies who are going to watch this. 14 defining characteristics of fascism. Or as Donald Trump would say, fascism, 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 fascism. Number one, powerful and continuing nationalism. Where do we see this? Patriotic mottos and slogans and symbols and songs and flags. MAGA? Anyone? Make America Great Again? Anyone? Quickly going through. Number two, disregard for human rights. Of course we've seen that relative to the LGBT community. 
gay rights being rolled back, trans rights, the attack on trans Americans. And then, of course, what we've witnessed over the course of the last several weeks with brutality at the hands of armed agents of the state against black Americans all over the country. And Donald Trump screaming, law and order. That you must respect the police. Don't denigrate the police who are jackbooted thugs in many cases murdering citizens in the streets. Number three, identification of enemies as a unifying cause. Now, we, we, ob we obviously, look at this list here, racial, obviously, Donald Trump is practiced in this. Ethnic or religious minorities. We had a Muslim ban He's demonized the individuals seeking refuge in our country crossing the southern border. Remember the caravans that they went on and on and on about. They ramble on about socialism constantly. Number four, a supremacy of the military. The military is given disproportionate amount of government funding. Donald Trump, $740 billion he wants to spend on our military budget. The next eight, six to eight countries, depending on the year, we spend more than the next six or eight countries combined. Tell me if that's not given a disproportionate amount of funding. We could, we could heal hunger and poverty, homelessness in this country with $700 with $100 billion. Poverty is a public policy choice that we're going with. We're doubling down on maintaining the status quo, and Donald Trump certainly is. Number five, widespread sexism. Did anybody watch the, the tape, the Access Hollywood tape, and this last three years of Donald Trump and his fake machismo? Number six, controlled mass media. Fox News, anybody? One American News, anybody? The latest coup at Voice of America where Donald Trump put his own goon in there and then they fired a bunch of people? Come on. Number seven, obsession with national security. Once again, our military budget. And then the, the, the bullet point there, fear is used as a motivational tool by the government over the masses. We see this from the Republican Party and Donald Trump constantly. So is Donald Trump a fascist? What do you say? This is fascism 101 for high school kids. What do you say? Number eight, religion and government are intertwined. Is that your Bible, Donald Trump? Well, it's, it's a Bible. Ooh. Two Corinthians. He's desperate to pander to white nationalist evangelical Christians, American nationalist Christians. They don't care about these people coming over the, the, the southern border who are 99.9% .9 Christian. They don't care about their fellow uh, members of their religion. They care about American Christians. They care about their guns. That's what they care about. Number nine, corporate... Per There's only 14 of these, so hey, stick with me. Number nine, corporate power is protected. Mutually beneficial business slash government relationships. How many conflicts of interest have we identified over the course of the, of, of the Donald Trump administration? Even now, with COVID relief funds, he, he fired the inspector general of the Pentagon who was to oversee the, the disbursement of uh, coronavirus-related funds to make sure that everything was above board. Now there's nobody. And they're going to appoint somebody who is a Donald Trump crony who will look the other way even, even Steve Mnuchin, the Treasury Secretary, made Small Business Administration, these loans, these emergency loans that were appropriated, he's made all that private and confidential. No one can look to see what, which friends of Donald Trump, which rich, wildly wealthy friends of Donald Trump and friends of his, who got the money. That's private. We can't know that. Number 10, labor power is suppressed. Come on. Unions, yeah, that's a real friend of Donald Trump. Number 11, disrespect for intellectuals and the arts. Open hostility to higher education. What do we see right now? What, what are we witnessing with the coronavirus response? Complete disdain for science, for education, for expertise, for studies, for data, for research. 
free expression in the arts and writing is openly attacked. What do we hear about Hollywood all the time? Our music artists being attacked, even by, by surrogates of Donald Trump, dummies like Tommy Lahren attacking Beyonce and Jay-Z constantly. Number 12, obsession with crime and punishment. How many times have we heard Donald Trump run his suck about being a law and order president? How many times? Donald Trump is a fascist, ladies and gentlemen. Number 13, rampant cronyism and corruption. It goes back to corporatism and the government being hand in hand. Donald Trump passing out sweetheart deals with all of these billions or trillions of dollars of coronavirus aid. And number 14, fraudulent elections. I have done countless, countless videos about voter suppression. And how better to have a fraudulent election than suppress the vote, close polling places, D disenroll people from, from being on the rolls. Make it as difficult as possible for someone to exercise their fundamental democratic right in our constitutional republic. And that is what the Republicans have done for generations. And that is what Donald Trump and his Republican Party today are doing constantly. So for Donald Trump to try to, to, to flip this around and say that it's a far left fascist, 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 to, 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 to totalitarianism is nonsense. Don't buy it. Luckily, we have a choice come November 3rd. And I would encourage every single one of you, not only to take yourselves to the polls and, and your family, but to encourage your neighbors and any friends that you know who are on the fence who might not normally be voters. Because of number 14, because of number 14, we are gonna need an overwhelming response at the polls this November to oust Donald Trump, this wannabe practicing to, 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 to totalitarian. We're gonna need your help. Anyway, uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you guys for joining me. I'd love to know what you think. You can call me, uh, the 714 number here, daily at dollamore.com. Also, if you are in a position to financially, if you're not struggling, you don't have to budget it in, I would appreciate you to just consider becoming a channel member here on YouTube. You can click the button there or the, the link there that says join. And for fewer than $2 a month, you can become a channel member helping support independent media voices just like mine in days like this with fascists out there. Independent media voices like mine are more important now than they really ever have been. And I would appreciate your support. Just consider it. And if I'm not your flavor, if you like somebody else out there, support that person. Anyway, I'll see you next time. I love you guys. I appreciate you so much. Be genuine. Take care of one another.